Our brains expend 20% of our body's energy, one fifth. This is the highest among the great apes. It is also the highest among all our other organs, including the kidneys, the muscles of movement, and even the heart. All brains expend a lot of energy, but why we humans are so distinct among other mammals? Because being human and being smart costs a lot of energy. We plan our lives, we communicate with each other, we have thousands of internal thoughts per day. We think by transferring information using electrical signals throughout the elaborate, interconnected network of cables inside our brain. Our brain is an electrified organ, and electrical signals are highly expensive. But being being human and being smart not only costs energy. But also comes with a price, the price of suffering from brain disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. We still don't know what is the cause of these diseases, but my research has led me to suggest that a most decisive and deceptively simple factor is that big brain cells burn a lot of energy. I'm a brain researcher, and for years I have focused on the study of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is a debilitating condition that affects mostly the motor abilities of the individual. Anyone of us in this room could be afflicted with Parkinson's at any time. In five years, two of us. In 20 years, 15 of us. Over a million of Americans and. 10 million of people worldwide suffer from it. I was exposed to the pure science of Parkinson's disease at the University of Oxford. As a researcher uh, embarking on a new career, I was uh, certainly excited to think about the、uh, mechanisms of the disease. But when I saw those afflicted individuals visiting our lab, I was struck. By a sense of urgency, because behind basic science, these were real people with a profound need to understand what they are suffering from and real hopes for alleviating the suffering. I then now had a new and firm research goal to connect the macroscopical symptoms of the disease with a microscopic observation that excellent research in Parkinson's has offered us. Since 1817, when James Parkinson first described the array of symptoms of the disease named after his name, scientists have been studying the disease, focusing on the biological aspects of the condition, meaning the misfolding of proteins,、uh, the genetic factors, or the depletion of dopamine. But my team and I have taken a different approach. I look at the problem in terms of energy, and in terms of brain connections. And then I looked at where the problem begins, and it begins at the level of single brain cells that we call neurons. We don't know why diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease are neurodegenerative. This means that the individual is losing brain cells. Is losing neurons. We don't know why these neurons die, but we do know that dying neurons have a consistent feature in common: they are big and complex. If you'd like to imagine a neuron, picture the house you live in. Now fill it in with millions of light sockets. Connecting these light sockets. Makes a network of electrical cables. Some of the electrical cables are short, some are long, some carry huge power loads, other carry hardly any at all. These electrical cables are your neurons. My team and I wanted to examine 
how much it would take to transfer the list of information that is a single electrical impulse throughout the brain's network. So I built a realistic computational model of a neuron, emphasizing the cables. Specifically, I model a dopamine neuron because. These neurons are selectively dying in Parkinson's disease. The cables of one dopamine neuron inside the human brain may be up to five meters long. If we could sum up all the cables of all our dopamine neurons, it's halfway the distance from California to New York. <laughs> I kept all the concepts we knew about dopamine neurons, and I. Put them together in a new mathematical way, and I ran my model. What we found was that dopamine neurons swallow energy in what is called the rich get richer effect. The bigger the dopamine neuron is, the higher the expenses. And since the brain will be the first organ to suffer from an energetic surge. Those parts of the brain that will sense this energetic surge will be neurons that have high energy expenses, meaning neurons with long and complex cables, like dopamine neurons. Dopamine neurons are susceptible to die and fail simply because it costs them. A lot of energy just to exist. To go back to the house metaphor, your air conditioner is larger than your blender, and it uses a lot more energy. When you plug it in in the summertime, and your household、um, has a sudden need for more energy, the first thing that will conk out will be your air conditioner. So. Why? Where does our model lead us? It leads us to think that dopamine neurons are self-aware of their size and their energetic demands. It's like these neurons know how big they are, and they know they need more energy. When demand exceeds supply, they slowly shut down. The air conditioner burns out, so the rest of the house keeps humming. But while we can replace Our air conditioner. We cannot replace our neurons. So what can we do? Well, if our results and predictions are correct, maybe we can neuroprotect our brain cells by finding that fuse box for each neuron and figure it out how much energy each neuron can take. Then we could build. Very specific models, and come up with what is called energetic phenotype, a detailed profile of our individual energy needs, and then make what is called personalized medicine for people with Parkinson's. Perhaps design that drug that will target the fuse box of each neuron, and will turn it off. Every time the neuron is getting a little tired, it is an amazingly complex problem, but it's certainly worth pursuing it because behind science there are real people and real suffering. James Parkinson described the disease first at 1817, two centuries ago this year. Now imagine someone from your life having Parkinson's. Or actor Michael J. Fox, the last time you saw him on a talk show. We have made progress, but have we been so far? Let's model a future where diseases like Parkinson's will very quickly be in our past. Thank you very much. <clears throat>